Hello everyone, this is another Keen Tools tutorial and today we're going to show you how to reshape faces in your videos with the face tracker for Blender add-on. First of all, you'll need the add-on itself for facial motion capture. But to be more specific, you'll also need Face Builder to be able to create custom face mesh based on snapshots of video frames. You can get both add-ons as a face bundle deal on the official Kintels website. There's a free trial for all new users, just download the Kintels Blender pack to have them all inside of Blender. There's also a couple of installation guides on our YouTube channel depending on your Blender version, so check those if you need help. Once you have it inside of Blender, let's go straight to the sidebar, press N, click on the Face Tracker tab and then create new Face Tracker. Here's the add-on's main panel. Let's load our footage in here, click Analyze and wait until it finishes creating an analysis file. Now, Face Tracker lets you do facial motion capture right in 3D with a matching face geometry, which you create on the go also right here with the built-in Face Builder module. So it's a powerful and intuitive tool that you can also use for adding 3D visual effects or makeup smoothly to your shots while keeping all the facial animation and head movement. So we need a face geometry. Let's press New and here is where we select reference views. The more different views, the better. We suggest using a three-quarter view first, then click on Take Snapshot. You see it kind of snapped onto the face using the AI-powered auto line. It's already looking good, but we can do it better. So let's click on Plus Snapshot and add another view. Take Snapshot again, add a couple of more views. If you don't have enough angles in your video, you can also upload photos of the same person as image files using the Plus Image File button. Let's go to the first view we added, turn off both neck parts and now we're going to slightly adjust the face mesh in this view using these red pinpoints. As usual, we first right-click to delete some of the relevant pins and drag others to line up everything in a very general sense. Left-click to create and drag new pins if necessary. Use Tab to hide and show the wireframe. Then we move on to the next view. Click Auto Line and basically do the same things here. Remove useless pins, drag those pins that are off, and this is how we help it create an accurate face model. We will then need to do the same in all other views. And we're showing this part very briefly now. You can watch our detailed tutorial on how to create an accurate 3D head using photos and images. Okay, it's all lined up now. Let's hit back to face tracker. This is our 3D head. We're gonna use it for facial motion capture and head tracking at the same time. So let's go to pin mode and this is where we do the actual tracking. We need to set the initial frame. Let's choose the one we used as our first reference view. I think it was somewhere here. Next we can set the right focal length in the camera tab. This was shot with an iPhone that has the focal length value of 26 millimeters. And now let's click auto align, delete irrelevant pins, drag these guys here to line it up and I think we are ready to track it. Let's press track backwards to track from this point to the beginning of the video. If it starts losing the track, press pause, adjust the mesh position and continue tracking. Pause again, a bit of more lining up, you know the drill. Don't be afraid to delete pins if you feel they make it hard for you to line it up. And you can use the auto line button if the mesh is really way off. Or you can do everything manually. Okay, once we arrive at the beginning, we can jump to the initial frame and track forward from there. Now here the lips go pouty and the facial expression goes kind of too extreme for our 3D model, though as you see it's pretty soft. But in a case like this, what you can do is go up here, press edit, add this frame as another reference view for our model and line up your face geometry using that view so that it kind of adapts to its shape. Then go back to pin mode and align your 3D model in that frame. But then you'll also need to go through each of these manual keyframes and kind of revise your model alignment. The reason why we need this is because we've changed the head geometry a bit and so we have a 3D head that has a slightly different shape. So our track may need a bit of tweaking too. Alright, we can see the frames in which we made manual adjustment as green dotted lines. The frames between them need to be updated too. So let's just press refine all and wait until it finishes refining the whole track. It's finished refining, let's go back to 3D and check our face track. I think it looks really cool. The next thing we need here is project our video frames on our face track, in other words, texture it. 
Let's go to the Face Builder, Texture tab, and select Max Face UV Type. This will give us the high quality texture for the facial features. As you see, the two add-ons are synced, so all changes you do here will be transferred to the Face Tracker. So let's go back to the Face Tracker tab, open Texture Settings, you can set your texture size here, we're going to leave it like this. The only thing we'll change here is slightly go up with the expand edges. This thing helps hide the dark gaps in the areas where our face track is not perfect. And this time we'll create an animated texture by clicking save to sequence. Let's hit it and select the folder to save it to and just wait till it's finished processing it. It may take a while in case of a high res texture. It's gonna be saved as an image sequence, so it can be further used for beauty work, but we're not gonna do any of that today. We just need to texture our 3D model with it. So let's go to shading, press new to create new material, add an image texture node, load our animated texture in here, and then add emission and wire our texture through that emission node into the material output. Let's switch viewport shading to rendered. The reason why we use emission this time is that if we used principal BSDF, we would need to have some lighting. So let's put it back and also turn auto refresh on so that it doesn't freeze when playing. Okay, we now have animated texture projected on our animated 3D model and we can see that it all blends naturally with the video, which is exactly what we need. And now the fun part. Let's explore the ways of reshaping our animated and textured 3D face. Let's go back to layout and switch to material preview. What's important to know here is that while the head motion is represented by the XYZ translation of the 3D model, the facial animation is essentially the change of the model's shape from one frame to another. If we go to the object data properties, we can see those kind of snapshots of the mesh shape as shape keys here. Each of these shape keys account for the overall shape. But we can get more controls if we go to the Face Builder AR Kit Blend Shapes tab and press Create. This will create 51 additional shape keys known as Facial Action Coding System. Those are compatible with AR Kit Blend Shapes and they will allow us to manually adjust the facial appearance by really just playing with the values of different parts of the face. So let's go over here and crank up brow outer up left and right and also brow down left and right and this gives us sort of a cunning look on the face so we can give it a certain character this way and what's really cool about that is that when you press play you'll see it smoothly blending with the facial animation so that's one of the ways of reshaping a face in a video which may help you get some expressive appearances another way of adjusting the face shape is doing it in the sculpting mode we need first to create a new shape key. Let's name it as Morphed, set its value to 1, and now you can use sculpting brushes to do whatever you want to your model. For example, we can use the pinch brush to make the nose thinner. Switch viewport shading between solid and material preview to see the result with and without the texture. Use the inflate brush to inflate the eyes and lips, and so that way you can do some really delicate things. But you can also go to extremes and use grab to make a kind of S-shaped brows or make a gigachat face for example. You can also control the amount of this effect or do morphing by animating this shape key value. You can quickly compose it then by sending movie clip and render layers through alpha over to composite node. That's it folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Download Kintool's Blender Pack from Kintools.io, choose the face bundle plan that best suits your situation, or enjoy a free trial for both Face Tracker and Face Builder. Use them on your shots, share your works, like this video if you've learned something new from it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the bell in order not to miss our new videos. Thank you for watching, and bye bye.